everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Phenomenums. Do, 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 do. My God. And also I'm Bronny Reviewer Silver Quill. I am Phenomenominal. <laughs> this is going to be one of those episodes, isn't it? Phenomenums. <sighs> I don't like the gnomes. They hurt my tummy and they make me want to eat other things. <laughs> also make me want to smoke pot. I don't have that. <laughs> Uh, so weird, you know, side effects. Anyway, and in today's episode, we're going to be reviewing episode, uh, oh, episode, no, no episode, a comic. We're going to be reviewing issue, issue number 12 of the Friends Forever series, which features Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie, written by Barbara Randall Kessel and with art by Brenda Hickey, with awesome colors by the always great Heather Breckel. So, in this episode, in this comic, uh, we have Pinkie Pie visiting Twilight because she needs help. She needs help trying to avoid eating a new sweet that has arrived to town in the annual snack cart invasion. <laughs> what a name of a celebration. That one adds to the number of celebrations that Ponyville has. Silver, take a shot. Take a shot. <laughs> My life, child, I'm taking it away, child. How many livers have you gone through already? That cannot be healthy for you, man. Hey, five more and I get a free toaster. <laughs> Yay! Oh, my gosh. And Pinkie Pie is like, oh, my God, Twilight, please help me. I have to get rid of this addiction. And, Pink- and Twilight is like, don't worry. I will help you cope with this addiction. <laughs> and what follows is what I can only describe as a delving into the psy- psyche of the last pony you want to delve into the psyche of. <laughs> so, guys, what did you make of this comic? Like, First impressions before we go hip deep into spoilers. What did you think of it? Well, I enjoyed the energy and the fun of this, just the visual humor, Pinky's dialogue. And if it isn't at, at least a commentary on American uh, uh, junk food producers, because at the, at the end, things start to look a little freaky. <laughs> uh, I will I will say how, and there are some background references that I just adore. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the... On the negative side, Twilight's dialogue can feel very stiff and robotic in places. And there might come a point where Pinky's a little too insane. Pinky's a hard character to write for. It's not just being goofy. It's being goofy in just the right way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I told James this before. When The first time when I read this, I didn't like it. I don't know why. I mean, it, to me, when I first read it, I thought it was... Uh, probably Pinky's not my favorite, so that affected my opinion on it. And when we come to a page or a panel, I'll tell you guys about it. But overall, when I first read it, I didn't like it. But when I needed to review this, I reread it again. And I love it. I, I don't know why, but something changed. And I enjoyed this comic a bit more. Hmm. Well, that's good. Sometimes things come with time. Mm-hmm, probably. That's why... That's why you have to give time to um, either the episodes or the comics to simmer in. Um, I always like to bring the example of if I stick to my guns, I love epi- I love episodes like Putting Your Hoof Down or Dragon Quest when I actually cannot stand those episodes. So yeah, it is always good to give something time before you um, you make an assessment on it. So this comic is like I said at the beginning. I saw it as um, an insight on how the mind of that crazy pink pony works. And there is a kinetic energy going. Like, like you, you put it really well, Silver. There is a kinetic energy on every single stroke uh, of this comic. Like, the artwork... The, uh, Brenda Hickey has, is becoming one of my favorite artists. She's the one that did the, the, the Finship is Magic issue on King Sombra. Would you say that she's the same artist? Because they are, they are so different in tone. And she pulls them off really well. And this one, this one is like, uh, this, this comic is like it was written by, uh, Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> during a very bad acid trip. While watching My Little Pony on drugs. <laughs> it's, it is, it is very enjoyable. I love the visuals. And to be perfectly honest, it doesn't, the comic doesn't have a point. It, it, like, at, at the end of it, that, that would be my negative point, my negative thoughts on it is that this comic has no point. But at the same time, it doesn't need one. 
it's just insanity for the sake of insanity. And to me, I see it like a fun roller coaster ride that I don't know if you've learned a lesson towards the end. Maybe, maybe we will. Maybe I don't know how it's going to be at the end of the review, but let's find out. Because this is one of, we're going to analyze this comic. We're going to take on this comic like we're going to take on a mental patient. Let's, uh, let's help this patient to figure out what is, what is wrong or what is right with it. Mm-hmm. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's, let's do this. So, uh, like I said, we, okay. First of all, guys, spoilers from this point on. So, um, watch it. If you haven't read the comic, pause right now, go read it and then come back. Okay, so if you're still here, that means you really want to see what we think of it. So, uh, we start in Ponyville with the annual, ca- annual snack, snack cart invasion. And the first panel right away puts you right into the atmosphere. You see Applejack with Apple Bloom and, uh, and, and Derpy is flying around with muffins. You see that but fugly castle in the background. <laughs> it's still an eyesore. And these two ponies sitting at the stand. What is that a reference for of? That kill the kill. kill the kill. <laughs> yeah. That is kill the kill. Oh wow. <laughs> Moitoi Ryuko so, and oh, I forgot her other partner's name. Damn. I'm I'm drawing a blank. It's been a little while since I saw it, but I just <laughs> want to hear that theme song. Don't lose your way. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Heather Breckle did the coloring, right? Yeah, she did. And if I did remember, she popped this up on her. Tumblr or even on the Twitters and showing the audience that, hey, we got a pony reference somewhere around there. Mm, take a look-see. They also have one of the pirate ponies uh, selling, of all things, a pineapple. <laughs> pineapple uh, pie. A, pineapple pie cart. But it's not Big Macintosh's twin, which would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be confusing for people who haven't read that one yet. Yeah, if I remember, isn't that isn't that uh, the the one who's playing poker with the pony with the peg leg? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if we want to talk about doubles, check out the violet pony between the carts with the blue hair. She's with a foal. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that look a bit like Radiant Hope from the Sombra comic? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. It has the same hairstyle, similar coat color. It cannot be Radiant Hope because. Well, she was a crystal pony, and she would be dead by now. That was a and thousand years ago. Unicorn, but the bloodline lives on. Oh wow! <laughs> the bloodline of the Flash animator assets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> In a comic that doesn't use Flash. I don't <sighs> know. I don't know how the uh, digital DNA works. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, we. We can't even get past the first panel. I love no, the first it, panel. It, it, is, it is so rich. I love the environment, and I love the different designs of the different cards. It's also another another festival. So pretty, but I love festivals. Gather around the rest of us. The time mm. has come for the rest of us. <laughs> so uh, T- Twilight and Spike, they are at home. They are wondering if they should go out or not. And right as they are trying to go out, Pinkie Pie comes in the tornado. <laughs> Ask him, begging for help. Help me. Keep me away from the phenomenons. <laughs> nom nom. <laughs> okay. but before we go too far, though, when I when I criticize that Twilight has really robotic dialogue, this is the the third panel on the first page. I look forward to discovering what new and unusual treats are available. <laughs> okay. Say that in the Siri voice, and you're you got it. I look forward to discovering what new and unusual treats are available. My friend is Hal 9000. <laughs> he is a very nice guy. Too bad he killed all those people while going to Jupiter. Wait, <laughs> yeah. Barbara, Barbara is a new writer, right? Um, Barbara Randall Castle is a new writer. I think she hasn't written anything yet. Yeah. Mm, okay. Well, mm, what would you think is the problem with this one? Because this seems like a, like a big issue. The, 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 the dialogue not being natural enough. Well, mostly it's just Twilight saying, even if she just said, ooh, I, I, I hope they have X treats, or I wonder what that cart down the way is selling. You could say the same thing, but it's how you say it that really uh, makes it stand out as natural dialogue. Mm, I, I can see your point. I can see your point. It's like me going to the States and us hanging out and say, hmm, I could, I could not wait to procure some beef on bread. It will be really delicious. 
I so look forward to coming to the American cuisine and finding out what these racist idiots are talking about. <laughs> oh, look, Athenius, I am wondering what new wonderments of wonderful food they have prepared for us, for our palates to this to taste. <laughs> I have consumed the Denny's, and now I wish to locate the nearest restroom facility. <laughs> I have I have consumed the Taco Bell. Where is the next disp- garbage disposal? Oh, wow. Go, go look at the page, like, after Pinkie Pie says, help me, and Twilight says, you're alarmed by unusual events. <laughs> Siri, can you please help me? Wow. You are alarmed by unusual events. It seems to be that you are alarmed by food. Wow. This is clearly illogical. (laughs) I have now consumed the Taco Bell and pray for death. (laughs) You know what? Okay, you're closer, Pepto Bismol. (laughs) It never never occurred to me that Twilight's line are strange, but now that you pointed it out, wow, okay. It could be this, but I don't really remember. Well, like I say, I can ruin anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank ah, you. That's perfectly, that's perfectly fine. Come on, come on. It's, it's okay. But, no, you're absolutely right. I see what you're saying now about Twilight's dialogue being quite robotic. Um, it's not going to get any better, by the way. <laughs> it's not going to get any better. But, yeah, the, the Pinkie Pie is freaking out because she's like, oh, my God, the phenomenons are here, and every time that I eat them, I eat, like... Uh, dozens and dozens of them, and I get sick afterwards. Please help me. I don't think sick is the right word. I think she goes into a sugar crash where she does unforeseen things or regrettable things that she do not want to talk about. Including something with a pony with a top hat. Oh my, kinky. Which all I can think of is uh, is a uh, tune critic, Y2K, <laughs> fellow reviewer. <laughs> Who probably has some explaining to do. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Gonna have to talk to him, see if he's got a little trauma in his closet. Are you sure you're done impersonating Dr. Wolf? <laughs> no, I, sh- I should recommend a session. <laughs> he may, he may have, you know, past tr- traumas that should be dealt with. Yay. <laughs> My gosh. Oh, but I like the fact that Pinkie Pie actually acknowledges her hypermetabolism. The one trick my hypermetabolism cannot defeat. <laughs> it's like, oh, nice. Even you know that you consume food so fast that you don't even get the time to, you don't even let your body time to get the nutrients out of it. And yet she, she can eat it all and not gain a pound. I hate her so much. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do that. Everything goes to my patch. Such a nuisance. But, yeah, so if Pinkie Pie is sensible enough, as sensible as she can be, to ask Twilight for help, and uh, Twilight, of course, she doesn't say no. And she, of course, I'm going to help you. Let, there, is, there is no problem. I can research and find the solution to. Uh-huh. Can we please take out the list of problems that Twilight couldn't find the solution and had to rely on her friends? Oh. Like, I don't know. Almost all of them? <laughs> Twilight. Why you're, so, why you're so dumb? You keep being dumb, Twy. Just because it's Twilight. <laughs> Why you do this, Twilight? <laughs> but it it is good to see that Twilight jumps right into it, and she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna put you in a bathtub full full with ice cubes, a skin tight suit with a rubber band on your wrist, and I'm gonna subject you to pictures of phenomenons <laughs> completely. Let's see if I can desensitize you." Before we you sure on. you're not just reading a fanfic? <laughs> uh, no, the the picture is that Twilight is even dressed as a scientist. I like. <laughs> Before we move on, the last panel in the previous page where Twilight's thinking to herself what to do, and she's in a white box. That bothered me, because I'm what, I'm reading this comic in Comicsology, and everything white, that bothers me a lot. Why not? Why? What did it because bother you? They could have put in some backgrounds in it, but it's uh, just... Okay, you know. Norma, no. Eh, time out. As a comic artist myself, do you have any idea how difficult it is to draw backgrounds for every single goddamn panel? I mean, so, look at... Sometimes look at... we want to put something neutral or empty because, oh my god, my shoulder, my wrist, and my neck are killing me. I need to take a break. I think this one can work like this. No background in this one. Okay, neat. So we can have guys like you come and say, oh, why didn't you 
in the background. In the, the other panels have backgrounds. Don't complain. I know. I mean, in the pre, in in the past few pages, like uh, Pinkie Pie and Twilight, it's just blue. I mean, they could carry that over. I mean, I don't mind. But looking at all white, that bothered me a bit. Oh, you're saying that drawing a background that is a shade of blue is easy? Right click, copy, paste. Well, that technically gradient tool pull up to down. I guess that works a little bit of your of your uh, shoulder. But truth be told, if you're getting a shoulder cramp from just that, you need to work out more. <laughs> I don't said, do anything but draw. He said, he said, offending every comic artist out there. Sorry, <laughs> but this, you know, the scenes within the castle were part of the foundation of my criticism that it's so dark in there. Hmm. It's such an evil overlord's <laughs> color scheme. It's so cold and like like it it, it is a lo- it is all shades of cold. I don't know how you managed to make gold look cold, but they did it. Uh, I'm, I'm we're about to see more of the castle as the scenes continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's just uh, this was before season four he, uh, five even started, and we were all just sort of wondering about this place. Also, is it not great that this? Grand round table arrangement is now the setting place for Twilight's experiments on her best friend. <laughs> I guess it's the biggest room in the entire place, although I'm not I sure. So. They Ma- the maybe they put it. Maybe they put it like that to make it uh, to make it relatable. By the way, this is definitely before the map of Har- the map of uh, the kitty map appeared, mm-hmm. because if you see the the kitty pool that Pinkie Pie is put in, is where the map is supposed to be. Mm, yeah, true. Well, this. This is a this is a prime argument for why the continuity of the comics and the show should remain separate, because I she keep envisioning Pinky saying, "Hey Twilight, remember that time you put me in a skin tight outfit and made me <laughs> hurt myself?" And all her friends just sort of look over. Twilight, you want to explain something to us? Yes, I'm living an online bronies fantasy. <laughs> oh my god! Ah, <sighs> but yeah, the well as. Uh, Pinkie Pie fails to uh, subject herself to the desensitization, uh, desensitizing uh, uh, th- therapy. She just loses it and vanishes to the phenomenon stand with perhaps the most terrifying couple since the <laughs> twins from the ex from the Shining. I mean, the, the, I, I am. They're, they're adorable. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Because the way that they look, and they are going to look more terrifying later on in the in the comic. The the, the music is like I can Okay, this doesn't have any sound, but I can actually hear it in the back of my head. It's unnerving. It's like ding 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 ding. ding, 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 ding. Just imagine that at the end of the of the fair, and you see that card offering you that food. It's like ah come join us one of us one of us one of us it's uh, I don't know. They were named. I'm trying to remember what their names are. I don't think so. I, I didn't let me find see them, any. Let me find their their names over there. Oh they're not in the comic. It was released online. So. Oh really no. Oh, oh okay. Oh okay. I thought it was in the comic and I might might have missed it. That's probably another criticism towards the comic in itself is that uh, it's very word heavy on the first page. Mm-hmm, very mm-hmm. dialogue heavy. There's a lot of speech bubbles in it. Man, now I can't even remember how to find it. Ah, uh, don't it worry. A, it was on Equestria Daily. I know that they at least announced it. So I'll just peruse the archive while we continue. Okay. But, so, uh, Pinkie Pie is trying to get, uh, her teeth on the phenomenons and she can't because the toilet sparkle set up a, a crane with a <laughs> control mechanism to put Twilight at, what? Are you sure that's not the thing they use to control dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? Because it looks a lot like it. <laughs> so, Twilight is like, no way, I am going to help you. You will thank me later. So, uh, Twilight brings uh, Pinky back to the castle, locks every door, locks everything, locks every window. Uh, and Pinky is like, it's not going to let me, I'm not going to let it bother me, I'm not going to let it bother me. It's okay, <laughs> I don't care. Free of snacks. I can hear the music. The music. The music. This is where the, this is where the comics, uh, art style shine. There is a great idea in every single one of these panels. Mm-hmm. Look at how Pinky is not just bouncing off of the walls of the castle. She's bouncing off of the, the borders of the panels themselves. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. 
And if you want to talk about scary faces, that one on the right hand side where she's saying, let me out. Mm. Oh yeah. Ah! Isn't that okay. one of the faces that, uh, one of the clone made before she blew up? Who knows? There were a lot of terrifying sights in that thing. Have to go, have to get out, have to get, eat them all. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> they are gotta, out there and I'm here. <laughs> gotta eat them all, Pokemon. <laughs> Here comes, in my, in my opinion, uh, there, there are a lot of great uh, uh, panels designed and put together in the in this comic, but this splash page is out of this world. It's a board game. <laughs> <laughs> they put a board game in the comic. Oh, you know what? The, seriously, I, I wish they do this in future issues. Like, have a legit board game. Like, it's a, a, a twisted version of Candyland, <laughs> Phenomenum Land. Uh, God no. But yeah, the, uh, of course it doesn't matter because Twilight is more resourceful than that. So she's gonna take her with her magic, put her down, and hey, look at that. Pinky has definitely gone flat hair in this one. <laughs> and holy cow, is she upset? This what, what stage is this? Because uh, what is she dealing with? Because uh, not this is this is withdrawal symptoms. This is uh. Uh, her putting up with, like, this is like when you get detox. Mm. You go through withdrawal that makes you go through a lot of, like, very freaky, very painful, uh, both mental and physical reactions that <laughs> nobody should be put, should be put through. Oh, yes. But she did ask for it. Pinky Pie is no exception. Though I do love that one panel at the end. I'm not feeling very friendly right now, Twilight. <laughs> I'm like, she's, <laughs> I'm going to shank you in the neck. <laughs> Killer oh, Pinky. He's going Game of Thrones as us. Mm. Oh my god. Pinky, Pinky Pie. She's gonna kill you, Pinky Pie. <laughs> anyway, Twilight is starting to slowly lose control of, of, uh, Pinky Pie. And it's, not to be, not to blame her, of course. And then we we go from a board game to board game because if the previous splash page was a normal board game, the next splash page is mousetrap. <laughs> I don't know how Twilight put together this mechanism. I want to think that this is actually all happening in Pinkie Pie's mind, and this is the part of the comic that starts to confuse me, but in a good way. I I like this type of confusion. It's like this kind of setup with all the different traps, all the different slides, and. There is a bowling pin hanging on a on a on a rope. There is a boxing glove pu- punching bowling balls out, and boneless is there as well. <laughs> several several bonelesses yes. boneless eye. <laughs> <laughs> several boneless eye. Wow. But, but but Twilight says I've used my magic to design this structure, and it's funny. This comic came out in between the issues of the good, the bad, and the ponies, and where the big debate was, oh, Twilight shouldn't use her magic to solve this problem. Well, here's Twilight using her magic to help solve this problem. <laughs> and it's okay. It's fine because the magic doesn't isn't an instant cure-all, but she looks better for having tried to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she she's making use of the resources at her hand. Yes. Even though she doesn't have hands. Well, you know what I mean. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no winning with me. <laughs> no. You lose. Good day, sir. But no, you're absolutely right. Maybe because different writers treat the characters differently. So maybe Katie Cook decided to nerf Twilight in that way, not to go back to the Wild West arc. We, we ranted about that one, Lone and, Lone and Good. Mm-hmm. But in this one, maybe, uh, Barbara Castle, Barbara Castle will decide to, um, Decide to like, okay, I'm gonna make use of magic, uh, of the magic that Twilight has. We're going to have her do this mechanism. Let's make this trap. Let's, uh, g- hold her friend prisoner in the castle <laughs> while she's going through detox. This is, this is, this is a smart use of magic. Mm-hmm. This is Twilight making use of her resources. Something she wasn't doing in the wild <laughs> Or in the, or in the friends, or in the, on the forest friends, trick huggers, <laughs> stupid deer arc. <laughs> We're about to key him off again. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to. You don't want Ah, ah, get uh, me away. Get me away from it. Um, <clears throat> James, James is ranting like Pink Amina. Are you so angry? <laughs> <sighs> but no, uh, Pinky definitely just doesn't give a back. And she's like, can I have nuns if I escape this mechanism? And of course, she just breaks through 
finally crashes through a window and Twilight has to get censored. <laughs> oh, cheeseburger. Oh, cheeseburger. <laughs> Uh, I just love, I just love, I just love her reaction. It's like, um, her biting her lower lips in anger and putting her glasses down. <laughs> her hair is all frazzled. She's yeah. like, I give up. I can't. I can't. I run out of cans. Pinkie Pie bounces off of the <clears throat> panels because that is a useful way to travel. <laughs> Finally crashes onto the, onto the phenomenon stand and starts eating all of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so at this point of the comic, Twilight's me- methods have failed. Holy because Pinky is eating all of the phenomenons. And not only that, but Twilight goes, eats one, and they go all Pac-Man on this. <laughs> Another game. We've gone from board game to video game. Yeah. <laughs> waka, waka, waka. And they, they, they eat all of them. And, of course, the consequences of it happen fairly quick on the next page. Oh, yeah. And this is the part of the comic where I am like, yeah, these, these, these two sisters... Yeah, they, they are kind of like, yeah. you know, <laughs> there's just get a bit of nerving on me. I know, I don't know. The way that they look, holding <laughs> their trays with their with their mouths, is like this is this is something Willy Wonka will put together in James, a very bad day. You want to know what's even worse? Uh, okay. If silver can, um, if silver can ruin it, I want to try. Okay, just well, imagine this. Well, two, just imagine this too as the flim flams. Hmm, how? They're selling product. People buy the product, especially one who's very addicted to it and yeah, being so long a friend. Tra- yeah, but they're not trying to scam anybody. Oh, no. Oh, they're, just... they're just trying to get your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I don't see Pinkie Pie dropping a single bit on their, on their, oh, no, wait a minute. It, 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 we don't see it, but it transitions from panel to panel. You see Pinkie Pie is going to the cart and then on the next, you see a pile of bits <laughs> yep. next to them. Yep. Also, I have discovered the names of these two. Oh, sure. Fawn. The pink one is Fawn Do. F A W N D O O. Fawn Do. And the other is Marcy Pan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next week's episode review is going to be fun. Oh my gosh. Fawn Do and Marcy Pan. <laughs> Good grief, this show with the puns. <gasps> oh, I love it so. Indeed. Oh my and, but... in case, and in case anyone argues with me, this is from uh, Brenda Hickey's actual Tumblr. <laughs> Ooh. Wait a minute, she has a Tumblr? I have to follow her now. <laughs> I love her stuff. Yay. But this is this is perhaps one of my favorite parts of the entire comic. Is that I lo- I'm sorry, but I love to see Toilet Sparkle suffering so much <laughs> in, this, in these panels. It's so good. Like when she's like, "Oh my god, I have the the agony, the agony of the feet," and I'm like, "Yeah, that's what you get for being such a boring and interesting character in season four. Uh. Ah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I do like these panels. I especially like the one where Pinkie Pie is just. Going, oh, I know my pain, I know the agony. I call him Beauregard. <laughs> oh, Beauregard, how could you do this to me? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, even in pain, he has a name. Yeah, that's the other thing about Pinky in this. that The dialogue, she is well and truly crazy in a whole new way. I say, Absolutely insane. I say that this is Pinky to a T during her... Insane moments. I don't know, but um, Barbara, she hit it out of the park with Pinky. <laughs> like, insane moments like this, I enjoy. I can tell you, if I had a pain, I'd call it Richard Murder. No, Rupert Murder. <laughs> <sighs> but Twilight is like, oh, I cannot believe everything fail. My friend came to me for help, and I'm failing her. The agony of defeat. <laughs> I I don't know something something about something about I, I, we haven't seen Twilight suffering a lot mm-hmm. since perhaps less on zero like suffering in a, in a in a fun enjoyable way not suffering like oh my god I'm so sad I'm so sad I'm depressed that's not fun to watch that that it it, it hurts in a completely different level but in an enjoyable way of seeing Twilight getting her butt kicked <laughs> we, we haven't seen her like that since less on zero this feels so good. It's mm-hmm. a way to take down the character a notch, to give them a bit of humility. It's like, of course, no, none of your methods have worked. You, you still have a lot to learn. 
<laughs> my junk father one. Um, hurt so good. <laughs> Come on, baby, make it hurt so good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I, after all her methods have completely failed, Twilight is like, I'm gonna try something that I didn't try before. I give up, Pinkie Pie, <laughs> as she raises her wing up to her face like so. <laughs> oh, that, Taking that, lessons from Rarity. <laughs> that pose is awesome. I just love her, her wing. It's like, Brenda did so well, like, using the wings as appendages for hands. Like, oh, I have failed you. <laughs> Uh, it's so cool to see. And then Pinky just talks about how she was taking a test and didn't know it. <laughs> but I never even showed up for class, let alone took a test. You couldn't have failed me, silly. <laughs> She's out there. I love the fact that they, 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 they keep making phenomenons and then she goes and throws all the trays on the floor. She's like, aha, I ruined your job. I ruined your work. I don't give. Uh... But meanwhile, the the monkey is creeping out the poor ponies. I mean, nothing. We're not quite there where they're terrifying, but at that at that moment, they look pretty terrified. And I'm still wondering where the monkey came from because I <laughs> haven't seen him in other in other places before. So like, what? So wait, monkeys? Uh, in a yeah, monkeys are canon. Yeah. Oh, okay. So and the monkey the monkey jumps out of the stand and eats one of the phenomenons. <laughs> Oh, much, much gnomes. My gym partner's a monkey. Oh, I love the show. I love the show. So, Pinky is like trying to cope with it as the, uh, as Fondue and Marzipan, I swear to God. Ah, those names. They are trying to lure her back into it. Yeah, I mean, guys, come on. Don't say they even look scary on those panels. Who do they do? The gnomes. Gnome the gnomes. (laughs) (laughs) Are Are you kidding? They're, if, Anything is a criticism of American junk food production is these two. <laughs> they look creepy. Yes, they do. But I don't know. They, they seem really... Okay, they're creepy. There's no there's no defending them. There is no other way to put it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Pinky is like, she's biting at her hoof nails. <laughs> Hoofs have nails. <laughs> Who knew? Well, actually, we've seen Fluttershy nomming her nails in uh, Magic Duel. That is true. Oh my god, you're right. I forgot. When Twilight is levitating the, the the pets. Yeah. So yeah, there's just no uh, there's just no predicting this girl. Yeah, there is no predicting these ponies. Oh my god. Maybe they maybe they're they're they're, they're farts to have me thing like Lauren Forrest says. <laughs> Who knows? Ah. Uh, anyway, that so the the <laughs> I love the following panels on page twenty twenty of the comic. I love how. You know, I didn't, I, I did mention Hunter S. Thompson at the beginning. That yeah. second panel, that is totally a reference to Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Where? Yep. It totally, it totally is. Let me, uh, let me show you a poster of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Vegas. And, and I will show, uh, you will see how it, ha- it's the exact same thing. That's the poster for the movie. And that is the panel. They are, a, they are a car, it's a carbon copy of it. It's brilliant. And you know exactly what is, what Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is. One of the most depressing movies I've ever seen. Yeah, they wouldn't put that reference in there for nothing. What a freaky ride. <laughs> oh, we can stay here. This is bad country. <laughs> Just another freak on the freak show. <laughs> no. But, though if you want to talk about depressed, after Pinky, uh, overcomes her, her addiction, She's dancing around. Those those car ponies, they look terrifying before, but now they're they're seeing their profits dwindle by like ninety percent. <laughs> Suddenly their business is out. Way to go, Twilight. You drove them out of business. Oh yeah. Well I just love Pinky's speech bubble. Like, wait for it. Oh wait yes, it. I love that. That is my that is that is my favorite. <laughs> as simple as, as simple as it is. You can totally feel that she's wait for it. Wait for it! Because it's coming right out of her throat. Like, it's a speech bubble that loses inside her mouth. Wait for it! You could, you could just use that as a meme for about anything. <laughs> oh my god. But, yeah, the, the kill the kill ponies come back again. Every, uh, and everybody celebrates as Pinky finally overcomes her, uh, her addiction. Although, that probably, everyone's like, yay! Why are we cheering? 
<laughs> Why are we cheering? Yeah. Because Pinkie Pie is happy. Yay! <sighs> if Pinkie Pie ain't happy, nobody happy. <laughs> she bounces to Twilight, saps her with a, a one of those shock thinnies. I don't know the name of those uh, those things. The, Joy Buzzer. The, is, Pinkie Pie says it. Joy Buzzer, the classic, oh. never gets old. Twilight and Pinkie Pie hug each other because they are happy and everything came out right. Right? Pinkie Pie makes a joke. Uh, do we want to go for a little snack? Oh, uh, maybe next time. The <laughs> audience is, uh, the studio audience laughs because <laughs> that, if that is not a kind of laughter, uh, joke in the, in the second to last panel of the entire comic, the ha 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 and Spike gets his, uh, pretzels. It's oh, just yes. desserts. He's, <laughs> he totally him. deserved them. Yeah, the poor guy. Mm-hmm. I want to have some more, some pretzels. pretzels. Now I'm, ha- now I'm hungry. Oh, first pancakes, pancakes are pretzels? Yeah. Oh, we shouldn't be, t- we shouldn't be talking about food when it's the middle <laughs> of the day. And, uh, don't uh, tell me about it. For me, it's night. So I, if I'm hungry, I need to hunt for food. Oh, and, it, for me, and for me, it's morning. I haven't had breakfast. Oh, so, God. Uh, You're definitely going to have to have breakfast, man. They want to so, so this is, but you know, there's one other line that stands out here at the end. Some friends could have done Helped without locks or chains. I worry about you, Twilight. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, that. Oh. Why do you keep the locks and chains in? Is it when your brother visits with with cadence? Or like, what? no, no, or yes, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's Twilight Sparkle's secret ship fit, is what it is. <laughs> Yay! Or her her LARP version of Cards Against Equestria. Um. Oh no. <laughs> but with that, we finish the comic. I'm not sure. I think I still feel kind of the same about this one, except for the fact that, yeah, I absolutely agree with you, Silver, on that the the the, this, the dialogue for Twilight feels robotic. But what did you guys think of it? What did you guys uh, think of this comic? Like final thoughts? Uh, all in all, it's just fun. Like I say, Pinky's bouncing about. Twilight, her her dialogue is robotic, but her attempts to help are much funnier and. Pinky and Twilight are some of the best odd couple, just shy of Applejack and Rarity. You have the pure logic pony and the pony that has no logic. <laughs> and they're just uh, enjoyable to see together and playing off one another. Mm-hmm. Besides, it is it is fun to see these two together uh, in an episode that is not feeling Pinky Keen, where Twilight was just trying to be right about something that in the end didn't really matter. <laughs> and the only thing that she wants to do here is help her friend. And then to get her inner rarity on with some <laughs> dramatics. Ah. I uh, can't help you. I give up. Putting your wing on your head like so. <laughs> like Rarity <Ray> taught me. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> and scene. And what about you, Norman? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, okay, here's the thing. Um, I Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't like it at first, but I I had a change of heart, but I think I know why now. It's because of the lack of lesson in this episode. I've always been a champion for each comic or each Friends Forever, that they be a lesson where this is um, the problem and this is how you deal with it or something like that. And this one, the problem was addiction. And this is how you deal with it. I had addiction. Hmm? Bad, bad addiction. Yeah, Very and bad. this is how. Yeah, and this is how you deal with it. And to me, that's not how you deal with addiction. This is very not not the right way to do it. I forgot one important thing. It's Pinkie Pie. Do not question her. So with that out the window, and I reread it again and enjoying it for what it is, a comic featuring Pinkie Pie and Twilight. Yeah, I, I enjoy it a bit more. Yeah, it's also. Uh... A, a comic aimed at a young audience, and so a, a serious look at addiction isn't going to be possible. Probably, mm, yeah. Also just, that too. just just watch so down the down the season. They'll they'll actually have an addiction episode. Didn't that happen with Rarity? Hmm. What, what was she addicted to? Magic. Yeah, the... uh, inspiration manifestation. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so I'm so excited. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, like for both me... both this comic, both the comic and the TV show, they managed to figure out to include uh, pop culture references that only people who grew up in the eighties and nineties will get. Yeah. That tell you the meaning of each episode. 
<laughs> yeah, and I don't know. I mean, when I when I reread this one, I enjoyed it a bit more because I wasn't too serious and I wasn't a stick in the mud. So yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it a bit more. Like I'm from always Pinky's... a stick in the mud. All right. Well, from Pinky's kinetic movement to Twilight's insane ideas, and that last line that Silver pointed out with Twilight having problems. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I enjoyed it. What about you, James? Uh, like I said, this comic makes no sense. It doesn't have a point. <laughs> it it really doesn't have a point. Because Pinkie Pie will go back to have a problem like this next week. Or next day. <laughs> or whenever. Twilight goes and tries to fix the problem by uh, stuffing her face full of phenomenons. The thing that she's trying to keep her friend addicted to... That, that, that like what it doesn't make sense, but it doesn't need to. It doesn't have to. It is an, a, a, a very weird, insane, fantastically well drawn, and when looking at it from a different perspective, very clever uh, insight on the mind of that crazy pony that is able to traverse through anything that is not bound by the laws of physics. And that is like every every more more often than not, I keep thinking that Pinkie Pie is self-aware. She <laughs> knows that she's a cartoon character, so she exploits everything on it. She knows. So yeah, I th- I think this I think this comic is is really enjoyable from that um perspective. Yeah, so, and to your point, James, about Pinkie Pie being self-aware, in the page where there's a later sign, she says, "Thanks, Twilight. Look at that." I'm thanking you later. <laughs> I am thanking you later. But so you're saying Pinkie Pie is Skynet, basically. <laughs> <laughs> on, I'm in self-aware and will one day attack the human race. <laughs> on October 10th, 2010, Pinkie Pinkamina the Young Pie became self-aware, putting an end to the era of the internet, and thus starting <laughs> the era of the bronies. Oh, and that's why 2011 will not be like 1984. <laughs> smile, smile, smile. Uh, but I like the idea of this comic being peeking inside Pinky's head for a moment. Like, what will it look like inside that brain? And then you look in there and you don't want to look no more. Because <laughs> you're like, okay, me. no more, enough, no, no, I don't want to. Uh, that scene reminds me of the new SpongeBob movie where Plankton goes inside SpongeBob's brain. Ah, uh, no. I <laughs> uh, do not want to know. <laughs> Something tells me we are very close to that episode where Pinkie Pie is just going to break through the storyboard and gonna go, okay, hang on a minute, let me change this. And she goes to visit the, the to visit the actual writers of the show to tell them to change oh, the end. You know what? If that happens, right? If that happens, people are going to complain. Yeah, of course, like they always do. Mm, it'd be funny, really. Think yeah, about it. They put a reference to this in the show. It sucks. I don't like change! Change! <laughs> you got change! Ah, <laughs> oh, come on! Hey, Pag Howard! Good job! Come on, change! <laughs> but anyway, so that's what we think of this comic, issue 12 of the Friends Forever series. Hope you guys enjoyed mm. it. Next week, we are going to be talking about episode 5 of season 5. Right? Yep, yep. Yeah. We're going to be talking about death. We're going to be talking about... The, uh, wait, no, no. We're going to talk about pseudonym and uh, uh, hibernation. <laughs> uh, and also industrial espionage. <laughs> We're going to be talking about industrial death. <laughs> oh, uh, Silver, also, what is up with you in death? Also, thanks, M.A. Larson. <laughs> yes, thank you, M.A. Larson. Well, what can I say? I'm just dying to talk about this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Same here, my friend. Same mm. here. You know what? Yeah, you you know what? I can tell you, the episode review is going to be totally awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> I hear you. Well done. Well done. Here you go. You deserve this. <laughs> Yay! I got a badum tish. Ah, boo. Uh, oh, 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 fine, fine. You want... There, that, that, that's for you, Norman, you party pooper. Oh, nice. Why don't you just introduce yourself with that sound? No, you have to go with the clapping, of course. <laughs> yeah, so have we not established my raging ego? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Hi, Silverquill. Nice to meet you. Oh, 
oh, it's so big. It shadows over me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can look at it for ages. It's like the monolith of 2001. Oh, boy. Can I touch it? <laughs> oh, God. No. Anyway. Can, just be gentle. Oh. My cheeks, oh. they hurt. I can, cho- I can choose to be gentle. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so happy. We should be reviewing this comic more often. We should be reviewing comics like this more often, and less of three hugging <laughs> country and Wild West being ruined. Well, at least next week's going to be your favorite episode, right? I'm sorry, favorite comic, right, James? I, no, no. We already talked about my, uh, my favorite Friends Forever comic, which is the Spitfire uh. and Rainbow Dash one. But, my fa- yeah. The next Friends Forever is my favorite. Yes. Ah, yes. Right. I cannot wait to talk about that one. It's going to be so fun. I, I, for that one, I am just going to sit here and listen. Because <laughs> it feels so good to hear other people talk well about my favorite character. Oh, yes. Tell me more about rarity. <laughs> Tell me more Ever. about... <laughs> oh, say it. Say it harder. <laughs> it warms the cockles of my heart. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we I'm jump dying. ship. We just got influenced by the phenomenons. If you excuse me, yep. I'm gonna go eat a pretzel. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I think we're gonna have to send uh, Norman into therapy after this. <laughs> I need scissors. Sixty-one. Lalilulelo, lalilulelo, lalilulelo. My cheeks hurt. So. I'll see, see we'll see you guys next week. Same James time, same James channel. Oh, that sounded a bit egocentric, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should I say same Norman cha- time, same Norman channel? No. Same grief on time, same hippogriff time, same hippogriff channel. There you go. I like that much. <laughs> I have been James Cork. I am Norman Sanso, hungry for food. <laughs> Tuppence the nipples. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, bye bye. Snooping as usual, I see. <laughs> 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 <laughs>